Okay guys, I thought I would get out here and try to shoot a quick video, try not to make this one too long, uh, showing how to put the Z, uh, Z box on here and also to uh, how to run the lead screw through there. So I'm going to try to move the camera around where I can find an angle where I'm not blocking it and uh, see if I can show you how I do this. Okay guys, hopefully I've got the camera view where you can see what I'm doing here. You can see I've taken the, out of the last video I showed how to line up the uh, Acme nut for the x-axis. And I've since taken that uh, lead screw back out. I know how much to cut off, uh, you know, to shorten it because I had it sticking out about 14 inches or so. So I'll get that cut off and I'll get ready to put that on. But for today, I will show you how to put the uh, z-axis on. Uh, again, I've already put all the bearings and everything in here. That's all pretty self-explanatory with the drawings. And in one of the earlier videos, I showed how to build the uh, Z-axis box. So it's all put together. You can see I've got the uh, quarter 20 inserts or T-nuts uh, on the inside to mount the uh, router mount, which is right here. And basically all I do, of course, this is the fixed side. So I just take this and kind of stick it over here, make sure these are all loosened up and move over to one of the other sides. And then I want to take one of my little adjustment screws. I usually start with the center one and just start working it in until I can get it uh, kind of snug on there. Same thing with these. You don't want to have them too loose this way. Uh, but these are all loose enough now. I can turn these by hand. And there we've got the Z axis locked in there. Now I'll come back and I'll tighten these up. Uh, in fact, I, I guess I'll do that now while I'm thinking about it. I'll just prop this up here. Uh, I've got my two wrenches here. And again, yesterday or whenever it was I did that video, uh, I talked about how to, you know, space these out enough and use a uh, hex bolt so that you can get a, uh, a wrench on there to tighten it down. So I'm just kind of snugging these up. Like I said, all I've done, I haven't really cranked down on these that hard. I've just kind of pushed them over there, get them good and snug against there, and then I'm going to tighten these down. Okay, let's see if I've got it. Yeah, that feels pretty good. It's uh, good and snug, no play, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, so now I can put the lead screw in here. And what I've done is I've, I always have a bunch of drop and I went over there and, and measured some drop and I've got this piece that I believe is about 17 inches, maybe 17 and an eighth, something like that. And I think that's going to be just about right. Now remember, you've got this block down here with this bearing, but you don't have to get the bottom end of this lead screw flush with that or even hanging out a little bit. I mean, if you want to, you can, but really all you need to do is capture the end of this lead screw in that bearing, even if it only goes in you know, a quarter of an inch or so, or three sixteenths of an inch, just to keep that from flopping around. Not that it's going to flop around. It's pretty straightforward the way this is made anyway. Uh, in fact, you can't even leave that block off and take the bearing out, and it will still work. You don't really have to have that bearing in there, but if you want to put that bearing on there, here's what I suggest doing. I went around to my shop, and you can see how I've taken my sander and just held this at like a 45 degree angle and spun it as it was sanding to put kind of a taper on there. Now once I do that, before I try to stick it back through there, through that uh, Acme nut that's right behind here, I want to take one of my couplings and see if it will thread on there. And I can tell that when I sanded that and put that little taper on there, it kind of boogered up those threads a little bit. So I'll take my 
trusty little uh, file here and I want to go through and catch each one of those five stars. You just hit it a little bit with that file. And what I, all I'm trying to do is make sure that that coupling, that there's no burrs or anything that's going to screw up that acting nut as I, as I go to thread it through there. So if it only takes a second here to do this, see what we get here when we put this on. Yep, I can now just thread that all the way on or as far as it will go on here so I know it will go through that that uh, Acme nut inside there. So now what I'm going to do is, and some guys, I've seen some guys that do this and they take this front uh, plate or front cover, whatever you want to call it, they take it off so that they can see this. Uh, I usually don't take it off. You know, if you got a good taper on that, I can usually tell. Of course, I've done this a lot of times too. But I can tell where that. Watch me have a hard time finding it now that I'm talking about. There we go. And you can feel it go right through. And in a minute, you'll probably see the little wooden uh, plug that uh, Tam and Dumpster CNC puts in that thing. It's probably already fell out and in the back of this thing. But I can tell I'm just easily hand turning this, so I know it's going through there fine. I'm not having any problems turning that at all. And now that I can tell I'm hitting bottom here, so let me move this out of the way. And I basically can take my finger. and feel that I am in that bearing. It's not poking all the way through that bearing, but it doesn't really need to. It's captured inside that bearing, and there we go. So now it's just a matter of putting on the spacer block. Uh, I like to use a spacer block. You know, the top of this is cut out so that you can't get to anything here. But if you put a spacer block on here, it also helps. Uh, or in some cases, uh, I'll probably even put two. That's what I've got on that other one over there. So you put two spacer blocks on here, it spaces this up correctly. I've still got it just barely into that bearing. So you can see I can just take my hand and, and turn that like that. And I've got it where it's just in that bearing. So it's really not that hard if you do get, you know, when you're building this, if you get that plate. Where it's not right, like I said, you can take this front plate off so that you can see what you're doing, and then you can kind of move that bearing around, or you know, take a Forstner bit and and kind of uh, oblong that that hole for that bearing a little bit. Uh, it's really not that big a deal, I don't think. Uh, you know, like I said, it doesn't have to be in there, but just a little bit, and I can tell from my finger, uh, you know, that bearing sits in there, and then you've got a little bit of plywood. I can tell that I'm pretty much through the bearing. It's just not coming all the way through the plywood, which it doesn't need to. It just needs to be good and solid like that, and it's it's good and steady. Like I said, even if you decide to leave that bearing out and not even use it, cut your lead screw shorter or space <coughs> excuse me, space this up higher so that you're not uh, not using that. It still doesn't matter because that's not what keeps this in line. These are what keep this all in line. Okay, now that I've got the lead screw installed, I've got this coupling on. It's already tightened uh, on this lead screw here. I guess I will check it just to make sure. So now I want to make sure I've got these loosened up. And they're plenty loose. And then I can go ahead and take my stepper motor and insert it into the quarter inch bore size. And then before I go any farther, I want to make sure I tighten these up. And again, when you're tightening these uh, Delrin couplers, I've probably mentioned this a dozen times in different videos I've done. Get them snug and then go back and forth. Tighten one a little bit and go back to the other one and tighten it. Just keep going back and forth until you get them good and snug. Don't over tighten because you can crack that Delrin. 
So it looks like that's good. So now I can take my two spacer blocks and I like to put the opening. Let's see if I can get them on there. So, and then I'm going to use a two and a half inch by 1024 screw because you need a long one. Because if you remember when I was doing the Z axis box, I've got 1024 T nuts in here. So, we'll put this on here and see if we can get one of these started. Like I said on mine, I like to use two spacer blocks. That way I've got a clear shot at all of these set screws on that coupling. You can kind of notice as you're, you know, when you're looking here, you can tell whether it's uh, slipping or not. So I think we just about got this. Here we go. And we have our Z-axis. There you go. And like I said, that uh, that uh, lead screw is just sticking through. There's probably not from the from the bottom of this to where I touch in the in the lead screw. There's maybe three sixteenths, quarter of an inch. So it's well in the bearing. Uh, it went down a little bit more after I tightened this down. But you can see you've got good solid, well, this isn't fastened, so, but there's no play. Uh, everything's nice and straight. And just for that, you can see this thing rolls well because my garage floor isn't level. When I push it back and let go, it rolls right back. So it's rolling really smooth. I've got, uh, I mean, that, you can't get any better than that. That whole face of that uh, z-axis box is perfectly perpendicular to the table. So, so there we go. That's. Uh, let me move that camera back a little bit and get a little better shot here. Okay, guys. I guess that's going to do it for this video. Uh, we've uh, got the z-axis all ready to go. Uh, in the next video, I'll finish cutting up the lead screws, uh, you know, get those filed down. We've already got this one basically done. It's already been run through there. I just need to cut it off and, and file the other end. Uh, we'll get the Y-axis lead screws, uh, put the stepper motors on, and be ready to fire this thing up. And I'll probably also, in the next video, show you how to set up uh, Mach 3 from the very beginning. We'll just act like this is the first machine I've ever built and uh, create a new pro machine profile and set this one up. So, uh, and I'll try to go through there and get some good screenshots of stuff like that because I know there's some people that have some issues with those. I get some questions. Uh, you know, I've done a video on how to do them, but if you don't do every little step, if you just forget one thing, it, it won't work right and I always see a lot of questions on Facebook and usually it's just something s simple that somebody forgot to do. So anyway, that's going to do it for this uh, video. I would like to mention that I created uh, on Facebook a uh, Facebook group called Gatton CNC. So if you haven't already, join that Facebook group, um, Gatton CNC, and like I said, it's a good place for people that are uh, if you're building one of these, you can post pictures of your build and uh, share pictures of your projects you've done with it or, you know, any kind of thing you can do to help somebody else. Uh, also, you know, it's a good place to ask questions. It's, it's, you know, it almost acts like a forum, basically, because if you have a, 
a question about something like this, uh, there's a lot of, of people on there that uh, have experience like myself that can probably answer your question for you if I don't see it first. So uh, anyway, that's uh, GAT CNC Facebook group, so feel free to join that. Uh, if you haven't already got your GAT CNC kit, uh, you can go to the website. I'll put a, a link right over here or put a link down in the description uh, on where to get the, uh, the kits. Uh, you know, get one and, and build along with us here. They're a lot of fun, kind of addicting in some cases, but uh, definitely a lot of fun. And it's, it's always fun for me to see the people that send me pictures of machines they've built uh, from my design and, and the cool projects they make. It's just, to me, it's just unbelievable building your own CNC like this, what kind of uh, quality you can get with a, with a machine like this. So. Anyway, I'm rambling now. That's going to do it. Uh, like I said, on the next video, we'll kind of wrap this up. I um, appreciate you all watching. If you like these videos, please hit the like button down below. Uh, leave your comments, questions, whatever. And uh, I guess that's going to do it for this one. So we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.